And everybody said, Amen. Father, we thank you for this uh, time. Thank you for your people, faithful workers, faithful leaders, pastors. Lord, we pray that our coming here will be blessed by you in Jesus' name. Amen. Strengthen your people. Amen. Empower your people. Amen. Grant us the wisdom to do what you have called us to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Open the scriptures to us once again. Amen. That we may go and bear fruit on the field of evangelism. Amen. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And somebody there said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. I welcome you tonight. Tonight we're looking at the scriptures from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And I'm reading from verse 19. It says, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. Underline that in your Bible, that I might gain the more. It didn't say that the church might gain the more, but that I, as an individual preacher, I, as an individual worker, that I might gain the more. Unto the Jews I became as a Jew, whatever other preachers do. And I, that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law, as under the law, that I, not minding whether others are working or not, but that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law, be not without law to God, but under the Lord of Christ, that I might gain them that are without law, or without the law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things unto all men, that I might by all means save some. And this I do, for the gospel's sake, that I might be partakers thereof with you. You will see from the passage you have read that Paul the Apostle was bent on making progress, bent on being profitable, bent on winning souls, and bent on gaining the more. And he looks at this section of society, the Jews, he said, among them, I want to gain the more. And he looks at this other section of society, among the Gentiles that are without the law, I want to gain the more. He was a soul winner. He was a servant of God. He was a preacher. He was an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was bent on doing the work, focused on doing the work, and wanted to do it with the wisdom of God. If we're going to do the work effectively, we need wisdom. We're told in Proverbs chapter 11, Proverbs 11, reading from verse 30, the fruit of the righteous is as a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. You might uh, look at it the other way and say, he that is unwise will not win souls. Because he that winneth souls is wise. He has to be wise. He has to have wisdom. In fact, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 10, reading from verse 16. He was sending out the twelve. And here is what he said, Behold, I send you forth a sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise, don't be foolish. Be ye therefore wise, don't be unwise. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. It tells us in Luke chapter 21. In Luke chapter 21, reading from verse 15, here is the promise he has given. For those of us who are rising up as his disciples, as the soul winners, as his witnesses, and we're reaching out to souls. Here is what he said in Luke chapter 21, verse 15. For I will give unto you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gain, say, nor resist. That he shall give us the wisdom to proclaim the gospel. The wisdom to preach the gospel. 
and the wisdom to throw out the net, the gospel net, and draw in sinners from the sea of humanity. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and verse 30. First Corinthians chapter 1, reading from verse 21. It says in verse 21, for after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. So it's not talking about human wisdom here. It's not talking about acquired wisdom here. It's talking about the wisdom we need. That is divine wisdom, wisdom from God. And then it says, it pleased God that by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. How do we have the wisdom to so present the gospel? That the gospel then becomes relevant and meaningful and profitable and it draws the people unto Christ. Look at verse 30 here. It says, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. We receive Jesus Christ and he lives in us, he acts in us, he speaks through us and his wisdom that he had when he was on the face of the earth reaching people and touching lives and bringing them to himself he gives that wisdom to us it says over here that jesus christ is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption how do we receive that then look at this the way we receive salvation redemption we went to the lord we repented of our ways we repented of even our good works so-called good works and we said there is no work that merits anything before you grant me your salvation we ask he gave us salvation look at this it says it's made unto us righteousness how do we have righteousness we desire righteousness seeking the kingdom of god and his righteousness for us and we went to the lord and we prayed and as we prayed believing the promise of god he gave us righteousness look at that word again the sanctification there how do we get sanctified we lay everything on the altar we consecrate everything to the lord and as we consecrate everything we say lord remove that adamic nature that in the sin remove that root of uh, of sin in us and he did he sanctified us so if we've got redemption by prayer by faith if we've got righteousness by desire by faith and prayer if we've got sanctification by consecration and by prayer of faith the same way we get the wisdom we go to the lord we say of ourselves we're not wise enough we have tried it out we've gone out we have witnessed we have evangelized and many people that we have spoken to they have not yielded the wisdom has not caught them has not pierced them even though we might say we have the scriptures we know what it means the steps in which every person can come know that you are a sinner you cannot save yourself only jesus can save you turn away from your sin believe on the lord jesus christ and you'll be saved we have gone through all the steps and yet they are not saved so we go to God, we say, God, we need your wisdom here. We need divine wisdom here. And it says, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who is of God, made unto us wisdom. He'll give us that wisdom. We're looking at chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 6. Chapter 2, verse 6, how be it, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. It says, we've gone to the Lord, he's giving us the wisdom. Christ is made unto us wisdom. And now we have that wisdom and we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Yet, not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. The wisdom of philosophy and psychology and worldly education and worldly upbringing or worldly training all that will come to naught when it comes to winning souls to the lord but when we go to the lord we speak the wisdom of god verse 7 but we speak wisdom the wisdom of god in a mystery even the hidden wisdom and it says which god ordained before the world unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew for had they known it they would not have crucified the lord of glory 
And now Paul the Apostle is going to give us an example of himself. How he wants souls. How he preached the gospel. How he built from the foundation. And then people were coming to the church. And he knew the Lord. He tells us in chapter 3. In chapter 3 he tells us in verse 10. According to the grace of God. Which is given unto me as a wise master builder. He said uh, the Lord gave me the grace. He gave me the strength. He gave me the wisdom. And he says as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation another builders thereon and then he goes on to say let every man take it how he builders thereupon and uh, how do we get this wisdom today second timothy chapter three in second timothy chapter three i'm reading from verse 15 second timothy chapter three we're reading from verse 15 and that from a child that was known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Look at that. You have known the Holy Scriptures, which is able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. It goes beyond that. You have known the Holy Scriptures, which is able to make you wise unto service. You want to serve the Lord, you need wisdom. You need to work for the Lord, you need wisdom. And you need to know the Holy Scriptures, which is able to make thee wise unto service you want to win souls you want to be a soul winner it takes the wisdom of god and it says over here that you need to know the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise unto soul winning we need wisdom in soul winning you know why the soul winner is a fisher of men Number two, the soul winner is a farmer is the soil the siege of the word of god number three the soul winner is an ambassador an ambassador of Christ pleading with men, come to the Lord. Number four, the, the soul winner is an advocate reasoning with men, saying, why will you die in your sin? There's salvation for you, and Jesus died for you. And he's pleading with them, an advocate. The soul winner, number five, is a peacemaker, leading men to make peace with God. They had been at enmity with God. They had been in opposition to God. They had been fighting God. And he goes there to make reconciliation. He goes there to tell Tell them, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And they didn't know that. He goes to give them that information that God loves them and they should make peace with God. The soul winner is an herald. It's an herald announcing the coming of the king. We're looking for the king, the prince of peace. is going to rule in this world and we want to be in his kingdom. You need to come and we're now seeing the coming of the king. The soul winner is a preacher proclaiming the saving gospel, the good news that saves us from sin. As I think about those pictures of the soul winner, those pictures of the one that goes to witness for Christ so that they'll come to the Lord, you understand? We need wisdom. Number one, the wisdom of the fisherman. The wisdom of the fisherman in the sea of humanity. And there are a lot of fish there. But if you don't have wisdom, they'll escape your net. They'll escape your hook and they'll escape your catch. You'll not catch them. We need the wisdom of the fisherman. We need the wisdom of the farmer. Here we're going to sow. We need to know the type of soil for the type of seed and the season of time and the period to sow. And the former rain now has come and we are planted. And then we know to, you need to know how to cultivate, how to water, and how to develop, and how to protect what we have sown until they bring forth the fruit. We need the wisdom of the farmer. We need the wisdom of the reaper, the wisdom of the harvester it's harvest time pray pray ye that the lord will say it harvesters reapers onto his harvest field and we need to have the wisdom of the harvester the wisdom of the reaper so that the harvest will not be wasted we need the wisdom of an advocate the wisdom of a lawyer here is a person who is condemned he's not even uh, thinking about his condemnation and here is the judge is about to face the judge and if he if he doesn't take time and if he doesn't plead and if 
nobody convinces him that he's guilty and he should plead for mercy he'll be condemned he'll be lost forever he'll be in hellfire forever and ever and we are the people to go to that sinner and to tell him you know you are guilty he says no i'm not guilty i'm a good man i go to church i baptize i was baptized and as infant i read my bible i pray and i pay the pastor's deal and we need to be like the lawyer that will convince him the advocate you are a sinner and then on the other hand we have to plead with the judge that the judge will set him free and acquit him we need the wisdom of the advocate we need the wisdom of an ambassador because we represent another country and here in this country this land and this world is at enmity with our country with the kingdom of God and because of that they are opposed to his kingdom they are opposed to his rule and they are opposed to his leadership and we then go to the people in this world opposed to the kingdom of our king and we need to convince them as the ambassador that our king is good our king is coming and our king will do them good we need the wisdom of the peacemaker the wisdom of an herald and that's the reason why we need wisdom but you know it's not like a passive wisdom an inactive wisdom because uh, the wisdom we're talking about is uh, w is not weakness there are some people that think that if you are if you're wise then you're weak you're anemic you don't say anything you don't do anything your hands are down they say the man is weak because he's wise no it's that's not the wisdom we're talking about the wisdom we're talking about is not inactivity inactivity you see there are people they're inactive they're indolent and they do nothing they are idle if you ask them they say i'm just taking my time you know and i'm very wise that's why i'm inactive no you are not wise because if you are wise number one wisdom is not weakness wisdom is not inactivity wisdom is not selfishness you see there are people they're only thinking about themselves i want to have this i want to have this i want to have this and then i acquire that i get that to myself that's selfish he's only thinking about himself I am saved and that's enough I'm happy and that's enough I have money that's enough I'm educated that's enough and I have this I have that that's enough that's not wisdom wisdom is not weakness wisdom is not idleness wisdom is not inactivity wisdom is not selfishness wisdom is not dormancy the people that just dormant they're dormant it's like they have never read anything about evangelism in the bible they have never read anything about going out and reaching out and touching other people they fold their hands they're dormant they're dead and they cannot do anything and it says you know i have the wisdom not to get into trouble when you talk to people and they don't like religion they don't like that kind of conversation you know you have to be wise you know as wise as serpents and then gentle as those that's why i'm dormant no you are not wise because in christian faith and in the language of the lord jesus christ uh, wisdom is not dormancy wisdom is not omission wisdom is not omission there are people they do the simple simple task and they do the simple simple things anybody can come to church even sinners come anybody can you know open your bible they can open the bible anybody can you know just be there but and they omit the witchier things of the word of the word of god go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and because they are keeping quiet and they're omitting that they think that they are wise no a wisdom is not omission and wisdom is not meaninglessness meaninglessness there are people they are just meaningless in their lives they don't they don't do anything they don't amount to anything and they think that because they live a meaningless life a watered down life an insipid life a life that has no interest a life that has no key can no has no power a life that affects nobody a life that touches nothing you know? they think they're wise they say don't you see that person went out and he got into trouble and that person talked to that other individual going into trouble but you know me i just live my life i know it doesn't have any meaning it doesn't have any impact that's not wisdom what is wisdom wisdom is work wisdom is work 
any area of life look at his student if that student is wise he'll work look at the person in the market if that person is wise he'll work look at the person in politics if that person is wise he'll work look at any person anywhere wisdom is work wisdom is industriousness when somebody is industrious he wakes up in the morning i'm going at it today i'm going to get something done today i'm reaching out there today i'm touching that life today is always looking for something to do it's always looking for a light to touch it's always looking for somebody to transform wisdom is industriousness wisdom is selflessness he doesn't consider himself he doesn't say i'm tired now i cannot do any other thing I've, uh, you know i've tried but he's selfless sacrificial is reaching out is reaching out is turning lives around wisdom is selflessness wisdom is devotion when you see somebody is devoted to a goal and devoted to a calling and devoted to a responsibility his life is there his mind is there his heart is there that's the wisdom we're talking about and wisdom is obedience wisdom is obedience when you see the word of the lord go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature rainy season dry season is obeying is obedient to the heavenly commission and to the heavenly vision and is reaching out and touching lives and is winning souls that is wisdom and wisdom is mastery is mastery over self there's some kind of natural traits a person may have is naturally lazy he masters that is naturally fearful he masters that is naturally a kind of a, a inhibited and he stay by himself it was it's not an outgoing person but he masters that he has the mastery when you have the mastery over yourself that's wisdom and so that's the wisdom that counts in active wisdom is all around poverty inactive wisdom any area of life will make somebody poor and will make somebody unproductive will make somebody a kind of an unprofitable person unprofitable servant it goes throughout life and you cannot see you cannot tell that this is the mark he has made that's not wisdom i pray god will give us wisdom real wisdom active wisdom that's what we're talking about tonight the active wisdom and fruitful sacrifice of a soul winner the active wisdom active wisdom the wisdom that rises up and does something the wisdom that is not just on paper the wisdom that is not just having a certificate the wisdom that is not just a you know recommendation a testimonial from somebody to somebody uh, this person is wise yes he's an active but this man is wise he's read a lot of books he knows a lot of the bible and he knows a lot of verses and I think he's prayerful his prayer life is spiritual but we can't see him doing anything in the public now active wisdom will come out and you are coming out and you will do something the people will tell you'll not have to say I am wise no you don't have to say I'm wise the people who see the action of your life and they see the performance of your life and they see that your life is turning from bad to good and from good to better and from better to best they will tell there's active wisdom positive wisdom in that man in that woman you'll be the man you'll be the woman and your life will count for the kingdom of god in jesus name the active wisdom and fruitful sacrifice of a soul winner three things we're looking at number one the winsome servitude of a progressing soul winner the winsome servitude of a progressing soul winner number two the willing suffering of a passionate servant the willing suffering of a passionate servant number three the worthy sacrifice of a persevering saint the worthy sacrifice of a persevering saint number one what's number one over there 
the winsome servant church of a progressing soul winner. Let's come back to uh, chapter 9 of First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 9, I'm reading here from verse 16. First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 16, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. You see that? This is a person that said, I have something to do. I'm not going to pass through this life like a bird passes uh, through the air and you cannot see any mark. I'm not going to pass through this life like uh, you know a reptile passing through the ground and you cannot see any trace of the passing through i'm going to do something you pass through this life but once but you must make a mark in the world you live they must know your name they must know your address. They must know the work that God has helped you to do. There must be something you leave as a legacy before you leave this world. And they will say that man, that woman, that Christian worker, he did something. And we can see the legacy left behind. You leave something behind. Look at verse 19. For though I be free from all men, here is it now. I'm born again. I'm a child of God and I'm free. The Pharisees don't have any hold on me. Sadducees don't have any hold on me. Those religious and hindering people, they don't have anything, any hold on me. The Gentiles, I don't owe them anything and they don't have any hold on me. I am free from all men. But now look at this. Yet, yet, yet have I made myself servant unto all yet have i made myself servant unto all that i might gain the more that the servant should i made myself servant unto all look at what jesus said matthew chapter 20 in matthew chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 25 matthew chapter 20 and we're reading from verse 25 here are the words of jesus christ telling us Serving is a real thing in life. When you make yourself a servant, you're not making yourself a lord. You're not making yourself a master. You're not making yourself a kind of impostor that is going to impose anything on anybody. You are here to serve. Look at the sun. The sun is serving the world. Look at the moon. The moon is serving. Look at the clouds. The clouds are serving. Look at the rain. The rain is serving humanity. Look at the ground. The ground is serving humanity. Look at the mirrors under the earth. The mirrors are serving humanity. Look at the petrol that they get from that place. They is serving everyone. Even the charcoal. Even the charcoal. The charcoal is serving. The iron is serving. Everything is serving. And then you serve say you are a child of God, recreated and renewed and redeemed by the Lord, you must serve. It is that servanthood that shows that you are grateful for the life he has given you, for the salvation he has given you. Matthew chapter 20, I'm reading from verse 25, but Jesus called them unto him and said, you know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, authority over them, power over them they want to be master they want to rule and reign over other people and they that they that are great exercise authority upon them but it shall not be so among you but whosoever will be great among you let him be your minister and whosoever will be chief among you let him be your somebody there your servant he wants us to be servant and it is the servanthood that makes us know that we are following the lord be a servant he tells us in luke chapter 22 luke chapter 22 i made my servant serve myself servant unto all servant of all in luke chapter 22 reading from verse 25 luke chapter 22 verse 25 and he said unto them the kings of the gentiles exercise lordship over them and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors but ye shall not be so 
apostles ye shall not be so disciples ye shall not be so children of the kingdom of god ye shall not be so real followers true followers of jesus christ ye shall not be so but he that is greatest among you let him be as the younger and he that is chief let him be as he that does serve for whether is greater he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth is he not that sitteth at meat but i am among you as tell me aloud i see that survey that's the lord jesus christ he said i've laid the example for you i've given you the pattern i am among you as he that serveth and we need to serve in preaching the gospel we need to preach this gospel in romans chapter 1 verse 16 romans chapter 1 let's read from verse 14 i mean data both to the greek and to the barbarians but to the wise and to the unwise how is it at all to the greeks you have not met them before and you have not uh, you know made any transaction with them how are you debtor unto them who oh, said my master my lord the lover of my soul he died for them and he gave me a message for them and he gave me their salvation and he said i should go and tell them that now they can have salvation and if i preach to them they'll have the salvation i'm owing them something not because i have transaction with them but because i have transaction with jesus christ and he gave me the word to give them so now i'm a debtor to the greeks i'm a debtor to the bad but to the wise and to the unwise so as much as in me is so as much as in me is all that means is as long as I'm breathing as long as I have a voice to speak as long as i have some legs to carry me as long as i have eyes to see as long as i know that there's something within me that can still get to that person and tell him something and tell her something as much as in me is i am ready to preach the gospel to you that are true also for i am not ashamed of the gospel Persecution has come already, but I'm not ashamed. Misunderstanding came already. I'm not ashamed. Even the Jews are plotting to kill him. But he says, I'm not ashamed. And they're saying that, you know, it's a new religion. This one that you've got now is not as good as the one given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And given to the children of his. They're blind. They don't understand. But I know that the gospel is the only thing that saves. And the salvation is so lame, Christ. So, whatever they say they might talk derogatorily against me or against the gospel but all the same i'm not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god unto salvation to how many people everyone that believe it to the jew force and also to the greek i pray god will give us that same mind of christ and he'll give us the heart to be a servant of the lord all through our lives in jesus name romans chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 20 romans chapter 6 we're looking at verse 20 it says but now being made free from sin and become servants to god anyone who has experienced salvation anyone who has experienced the new birth anyone who has been saved from sin anyone who by grace has been made free from sin has become the servants of god the servant of god it says being now being made free from sin and become servants to god ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life you'll be fruitful you'll preach the gospel it tells us in second corinthians chapter 4 verse 5 second corinthians chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 5 second corinthians chapter 4 reading from verse 5 it says but we preach not ourselves but christ jesus the lord and ourselves your servants for jesus sake ourselves your servants for jesus sake that's why he said i make myself a servant to all the preaching of the word of god is very important preaching of salvation the gospel is very important salvation the salvation of souls is of utmost importance 
is of eternal importance. To save a soul is to rescue the soul from eternal suffering. That's why it's important. There's nothing as important as that. Rescuing a soul from eternal suffering. To save a soul is to lead the soul to eternal rest. There's nothing else anybody does in this life that can give the soul eternal rest. And so preaching salvation and telling people how to be led to eternal rest is the greatest thing you can do. Number three, saving a soul is to deliver from the power of Satan. Satan is holding people firm, is holding people tight, and there's nothing that can take anybody out of the hand of Satan. Education cannot, philosophy cannot, psychology cannot, science cannot, politics cannot, money cannot take people out of the hand of Satan because he's holding them firm. The only thing that can do that is the redemption of Jesus, it is salvation of Jesus, that's why we see that salvation as the most important thing to deliver people from the hold of the power of Satan. And the salvation, when you preach salvation to people, it is to separate the soul from sweet poison. You see somebody is taking poison and it's sweet. And because the poison is sweet, he enjoys it, he loves it. He will spend his money to go and buy more of that poison. He will spend his life to search for more of that poison because the poison is sweet. And now you want to separate that sinner, that soul, from that sweet poison. You know? That's why it takes wisdom. That's why it takes real talking. That's why it takes real prayer. And that is why it's the greatest work you can do. You. And saving a soul is to withdraw the soul from intimate, destructive associates. The sinner is associated with uh, friendly foes and fiendish friends. The people that will destroy him, very intimate with them. And he's so joined to them, he's saying, I will die with you. You will die with me. I make a covenant with you. He's ignorant. He does not know that these people that are intimate with him, are associates of his, that they're destructive. And they're going to take him to hellfire. And now you want to come and get that person out of that intimate intimate fellowship and intimacy with the destroyers and you want to win that soul to the unknown lover of his soul he is sad about christ but he just knows that christ yes the christ is in the bible and christ came to this world and christ opened the eyes of the blind and healed the sick and christ the founder of a great religion you call christianity and christ they mention christ in the church but he doesn't know that christ is a person not lover he loves his soul and he loves him so much that he died for him in particular he didn't know that and that's why you go out to reach out to him to convince him that jesus is the lover of his soul and that is an important assignment it's an important duty so that you will need wisdom to do that but you need more than wisdom when you think about what jesus christ has said it says what shall he profit a man if he gain the whole world and he loses his own soul or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul you know the meaning of that the value of a single soul is much more is greater is higher than the rest of the world that all the material world now if you're going to gain anything in the world like money if you're going to gain anything in the world like property if you're going to gain anything in the world like something tangible a certificate how are you going to do that you need it's not just saying you know sit back i have wisdom i have wisdom you need number one a definite purpose to say this thing i want to get this business i want to do and this goal I want to reach, there's a definite each purpose. There's an investment of time. You invest your time, you invest your resources. If you're going to have anything in this world, there is investment. You invest yourself, you invest your energy, you invest your power, you invest your talent. And not only that, there's active faith, active faith. That's why you're running. That's why you're going to work. 
That's why you're reaching out for that thing. That's why the farmer is going to his farm. That's why the trader is going to his trade. Because he has active faith. If I do this, I will get that. If I go to work, I will get salary at the end of the month. Anything anybody is looking for in this world, he has, it needs that active faith. Not only that, he needs continual practice and performance. You don't just, if you're going to get anything in the world, in the world of business, in the world of politics, in the world of science, in the world of education, just read one day and then stop. You don't get it. You don't walk one day and just stop continually. A continual practice, a continual performance. If you're going to get anything in this world, there's going to be self denial. You deny yourself while other people are playing football, other people are talking, other people are just whiling the wait time because you have the goal, because you have what you're reaching out for. There's self denial. I can't do that now. I can't go there now. I can't can't attend to that now because I'm after this and I must get it. Anything you get in this world, even the doors of the world, even the sand in the world, even cement in the world, even land in the world, you still have to have that self-denial. If you're going to get anything in this world, you need love, affection, and friendliness because, you know, it's like a salesman. You're selling yourself. When you apply to get a job, you're like a salesman. You're selling yourself. All those people who are going to interview you, you, they're looking at you, they're looking at your composture, they're looking at your standing, they're looking at your language, they're looking at your diction, they're looking at the answers you are giving to the question. You're selling yourself and you must be loving and you must have affection and you must have friendliness. If you're going to get anything in this world, you need increasing knowledge, increasing knowledge. Otherwise, if all you know now is what you ever know, you'll stay at the level you have always stayed. But if you want something higher, if you want something greater, you're going to study and you're going to learn so that you can have increasing knowledge. And then you have daily thoughtfulness and living by the golden rule. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. Now, if that is what it takes, to take anything, to have anything, to possess anything in the world, salvation is greater than anything in the world. The soul of man is greater than anything in the world. And if you have to do all this to get anything, a little thing in the corner of the world, how much more getting the soul, how much more reaching out for the soul that is greater than the whole world, there must be a definite purpose. You make up your mind now, I'm a Christian, I'm a soul winner, I will win soul. Somebody there, I will win soul. And, and then that's not just a lame statement. It is of a definite purpose. I will be a soul winner. If that is so, that's the first thing. Number two, I invest my time. I invest my resources. You're going to invest your time. If you really want to get at souls, you're going to say this time of the day or this, week, this day of the week or this particular time I dedicate. How do you get, how do you progress in your work? You dedicate some hours to go to work. How do you make it in education? You dedicate some time to study. How do you make it in business? You dedicate some time to go to your office, to your market. Otherwise, if uh, you know, you just do it any time that you know, it comes to your mind. You'll not make it in life. If you're going to make it as a soul winner, you will dedicate this time and resources onto that scene and then there's going to be active faith there's somebody there that is supposed to be my convert there's somebody there i must reach out to there's somebody that nobody else can reach i am the one to reach that person and of course there'll be continual practice and performance the continual practice it is practice that makes perfection but if you only do it once in a while you want to do it now you're afraid you'll not open your mouth you want to do it now you're afraid they may reject me you want to do it now but you're afraid they may don't listen to me you'll never do it in spite of the fear move on and do it and you are going to win soul 
there's going to be self-denial. You'll deny yourself of the things, the easy, easy things. Have you noticed in our lives, if you have a lot of work to do, number one, number two, number three, number four, and then you look at number one, that's difficult, number two is difficult, number three is difficult, number four, this one is easy, and that's the one you do. And then you come tomorrow again, you look at what you have to do, one, two, three, four, five, number two, <laughs> I can't face that now, number three, I can't face that, number five, I, okay, I can, I can manage all this, I do that, if you're always doing, always starting with the simplest thing in life, you will never do the difficult thing. You'll never do the one that is uh, looking at you and saying, do you think you can attempt this? Do you think you can do this? In life, if you're going to make progress in anything, you will look at the most difficult and when you are fresh and when you have energy, and when you have excitement, and when you, when you wake up in the morning, you are not tired yet, it is that difficult task that you address and say, now I'm going to do this. When I finish this, then I will look at the smaller, smaller ones. If you're going to be a soul winner, that's how to do it. That's how to do it. You'll start with the major one and the difficult one, and the one that makes you afraid, you go at it. Thank God you are going to succeed. I, can you get anything in life? Can you sell in the market? Can you get promotion from your boss? If there's no love, if there's no affection, if you're always frowning, if you're always unhappy, if you're always complaining, if you're always, uh, you know, kind of criticizing the place of work, criticizing everybody, criticizing government, criticizing the, you know, the boss, and you'll not make it in that office. You'll not make it anywhere. Can you make it in the church? You, know, you come to church, everything is, everything is negative. I don't like this. I don't like this. This why is this one like that and you are complaining you'll never get far even in the church if you're going to get anything anywhere in the world in the church your family there'll be love there'll be affection and there'll be friendliness you'll have a friendly attitude a friendly a disposition and if you're going to be a winner of souls they're looking at you and if you carry anger in your face and you carry depression in your face and you carry tiredness in your face and you're not excited that you are living in they say, if you want to talk to them, they say, I'm even happier than he is. So why are you going to talk to me? You carry a cheerful outlook and a cheerful smile with dress neat because that's the first thing they see about you, but you don't have enough, uh, you know, enough to be able to even appear neat in the public. They say, how oh, is this one going to talk to me? It is that way we carry ourselves and it is that loveliness we have, it's that friendliness we have, and it is that affection we have that will make us to be winners of souls and i see winners of souls there tonight Amen. you will be in jesus name Amen. and then the golden rule do unto others as you want them to do unto you if they add the gospel and you didn't have the gospel if they knew the way of life you didn't have the way of life if they knew the way of light you didn't have the way of light what should you have wanted them to do unto you? If they knew you were going to hell and they have discovered the way to heaven and it's just a matter of telling you, my friend, this is the way to perdition, but this is the way to heaven. You will expect them to have told you. That's the golden rule. Whatever you want other people to do to you, do it even so unto them and you are going to be successful in Jesus' name. Somebody there said you'll be successful in Jesus' name. I come to point number two now. The willing suffering of a passionate servant. The willing suffering of a passionate servant. We're coming to First Corinthians. And I'm reading from chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 20. First Corinthians chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 20. It says unto the Jews, I became as a Jew. Uh, you know what that means? He said, I'm born again. I'm not tribalistic. I'm not a Jew anymore. I'm a Christian. I'm a follower of Christ. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. But you know, when I see a Jew, I become like a Jew. I act like a Jew. I think like a Jew. I go my way like a Jew because I want to catch his interest. I want to attract him. I don't want to be so different from him that he will say, well, even though I know him to be a Jew, he's gone uh, to Rome, he's gone here, he's gone there. But he said, 
I become as a Jew that I might gain the Jews. He said, that's my purpose. I'm not interested in, you know, what they're doing. I'm not interested in their tradition. I'm not interested in their rituals. But I do this that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law. As under the law that I might gain them that are under the law. I want you to understand the uh, lifestyle of Paul the Apostle. The mindset of Paul the Apostle. We're looking at uh, Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, and I'm reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 9, we're reading from verse 1. You see why he said what he said. To the Jew I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews, that the Jews might be saved. You see, many of us, we do nothing. We do nothing you know, to interest the people we're talking to. We do nothing to identify with the people we're talking to. And Paul, the apostle, didn't have to go to sin. No, a Christian will not sin. But he said, there's something I can do that doesn't involve sinning. There's something i can do that doesn't involve compromising and yet to the jew i can be like a jew look at why he said that romans chapter 9 verse 1 i say the truth in christ i lie not my conscience also bearing me witness in the holy ghost that i have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart for i could wish that myself were cursed from christ separated from christ taken away from christ if my leaving christ if my vacating my position will make room for my brethren he says for my brethren my kinsmen according to the flesh you see the way he was thinking and you see the passion of his life he said if i could be accursed from christ if that will help them to get saved if that will bring them the whole nation to know the lord i'm willing to even suffer on the other side of the grave if that will bring salvation to them look at chapter 10 chapter 10 of romans verse 1 brethren my heart's desire and prayer to god for Israel is that they might be saved he said i'm praying he said, I'm willing to suffer to you, and I'm willing to do whatever it will take so that they'll be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. God. And so you will see he had a burning desire. That's what he said. I have this burning desire that Israel will be saved. Not only that, he had an unquenchable zeal. Unquenchable zeal. He looked at those Jews and he said the only thing that interests me and the only thing that makes me heavy and makes me unhappy and makes me sad is that they are not saved. I have a zeal for them. Number three, he had a baptism of fervent love. Of baptism of fervent love. This is not just and baptized in Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues. That's good. That's good. But it was baptized in fervent love. He was deep and immersed in fervent love. He loved the people. He want them to get saved. Number four, he had a steady supply of inner strength. A steady supply of inner strength. He went from synagogue to synagogue. He went from city to city. And everywhere he went, he'll get to the Jews first. He'll get to the synagogue first he said fathers he said friends he said brothers brethren i bring to you the word of salvation that jesus christ whom our leaders crucified god raised from the dead so as to save you he always went to the jews first because he had an steady supply of inner strength number five he had an unbreakable will unbreakable will they tried to break his will and they tried to break break his mind because when he goes there they persecute him and the believers will get him away from that and get him to another city and guess where he goes when he goes to that city to the synagogue to the synagogue he went from Thessalonica and then he drove him out after preaching to some people some people got converted and then he got to Berea where did he go he went to the synagogue and he went everywhere and even to the last chapter of Acts of the Apostles he said fathers have 
called you because look at what is happening to me look at what her people are doing and i've not done anything against her nation and i've come to talk to you about this and he mentioned jesus christ again because he had an unbreakable will i pray god will give it to you and then he had a conquering spirit over self and he had mastery of self you know sometimes self will get tired the flesh will get tired sometimes uh, the flesh will say are you going again are you going to do it again but that man that apostle he had this conquering spirit and he conquered every negative every negative thing that came against him he had a consuming passion for the salvation of the fellow jews he consuming passion for the salvation of fellow Jews and if we can have that and thank God we can have that if we had such desire if we had such zeal if we had such passion for our own countrymen like Paul the apostle had for the Jews then we'll have such burning desire that will say I'm not going to allow anything to stop me I'm going to preach unto my countrymen many so-called Christians have a burning desire many so-called Christians they have passionate zeal many so-called Christians they have all also some stability of strength some steadiness of strength but it's for money and they'll do anything they travel anywhere they'll go anywhere to have that they have uh, this passion for personal gain personal gain i hear that that business is moving there i hear that you know the people are going there and they can get this and they have passion for that many so-called christians have a passion for property and for worldly promotion and worldly recognition and they have uh, this kind of passion for earthly recognition earthly institutions temporal things that will perish over time many who are red hot in seeking the things of the world are cold and lukewarm and lethargic and they're always acting tired in seeking souls for Christ and you need to ask yourself where is your passion everybody has passion everybody has a drive everybody has something that is pushing him and driving him but you must ask yourself where does my passion drive me where is your heart what seekest thou what are you looking for and what is the reigning desire and the reigning drive in your life what are you living for and what are you willing to suffer for Paul the apostle suffered and he suffered for the right thing now he is in heaven and enjoying great reward I pray you'll not miss heaven I pray you'll not miss a great reward but look at this in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12 2 Timothy chapter 3 I'm reading here from verse 12 it says in verse 12 ye all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall tell me out aloud suffer persecution that will not drive you back because you know in this life if you're not going to if you say i don't want criticism i don't want opposition i don't want any problem at all i don't want anybody to say anything against me you'll be dead before you die because you know whatever you do look at the people out there they're not even christians if they're on the field in athletics somebody is jealous of them somebody criticizes them if they are you know even in politics somebody criticizes everybody criticizes everybody else if they are into any kind of work once you're having a step ahead of them and you're having the success ahead of them they're going to criticize you you better go thick skin so that whatever they say let them say i said let them say tell them whatever they say will not affect you you'll keep on doing the work of god in jesus name and that is what makes us to make sure that we're doing the work of the lord and sometimes you might be alone you might be alone but you are not alone god is with you Jesus is with you. Even the angels are keeping company with you. It tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse, I'm reading from verse, uh, from verse 16. It says at my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Nevertheless, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. The Lord will stand with you. 
the Lord will stay with you. The Lord will abide with you. And he strengthened me that by me, the preaching you know, might be fully known. He stood by me for one purpose. He stood by me for one reason. So that the preaching of the gospel might be fully known. And that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered from the mouth, out of the mouth of the lion. He will deliver you. And the Lord shall preserve me. And the Lord shall preserve me. In the day, he'll preserve you. In the night, he'll preserve you. When you're alone, he'll preserve you. And when you are at the post of duty, he must preserve you. And the Lord shall preserve me from every evil work. Hold on, hold on. What was Paul the apostle sure of that? What was he sure of that? The Lord had committed himself in heaven. That I'm going to use this Paul and give revelation to the Romans. And so the epistle of Romans will be waiting until Paul was ready. And to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, it must go through Paul. And God had a bony message to say to the world that he's going to send to the Galatians. And there's no other person to bear that message except Paul the apostle. And God had a message that must be recorded down. And from the ages before the foundation of the world, everything God had decided he will do, he has put it down and he has, he has composed everything and he's waiting to be delivered to the Ephesians and Paul is the one to do that and to the Philippians and to the Colossians and then he has all these, all these deep things in Hebrews and Titus and Timothy and Thessalonians he has all that to pass across to humanity and to generations and generations and generations and he knew, he knew he must do that before his life will come to an end. There's something God wants to pass through you there's something God wants to give other people through you and that thing will be done Amen. nobody will take your place Amen. he must preserve your life until that thing is totally accomplished because you're not an accident in the church of the living God you're not an accident in Christianity you are called for a purpose and for a plan and for something to be done he must preserve your life Amen. I said he must preserve your life there is something that you are to do and you alone can do. There's something that Paul the apostle was to do and he alone could do. And therefore he knew, he knew like you know tonight. Like I know tonight. I say for, say, I say for myself like I know tonight. That the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. And will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Your life is secured. Yeah. Your life is preserved. That's why you need to rise up because the work is waiting for you. The soul winning is waiting for you. No other person will do this sin. And if any other person comes, God says, no, I'll give you your own. This one is for him. I'll give you your own. This one is for her. And the Lord will preserve you till the very end in Jesus' name. Point number three now, the worthy, the worthy sacrifice of a persevering sin. The worthy sacrifice of a persevering sin. We're coming to first uh, Corinthians chapter 9, first Corinthians chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 21. It says to them that are without law as without law. Be not without law to God, but under the law to Christ. It says that I might gain them that are without law. Have you seen Paul the Apostle? Every time that I might gain, every time that I might make profit, every time that I may succeed, every time that I may win souls, every time that I might gain for the kingdom of God. To the weak in verse 22 became I as weak that I might gain the weak. I am made all things unto all men. I am made all things to all men. I am made all things to all men. He says, I don't see myself as a stranger anywhere. I go to the south, I'm like them. I go to the north, I'm like them. I come to the east, I'm like them. I go to the west, I'm like them. I go out of my territory, I am like them. And I go anywhere and everywhere. He says, I'm like them. Because he says, I want to identify 
identify with them so that they will see i bring something to them that only i could bring to them and he says in verse 23 and this i do for the gospel's sake that i might partake i might be partaker thereof with you i pray that this will be your life in jesus name for, for paul the apostle all his life was for christ and all for the salvation of the gentiles for the salvation of the people of a different culture he said that's all i am that's all i live for for the people of a different culture of a different religion he says the gospel must come to them and that's why i'm living he sacrificed everything he gave up the past past reputation he gave up present recognition he gave up and even future reserves he gave up you know there are people that are saying i'm going to save this for the rainy day i'm going to preserve this for the rainy day paul the apostle said i don't have any rainy day it says my past past recognition past reputation i'm giving that to christ and it says all the knowledge i got in the past all the studies i got in the past in the past all the treasures i got in the past i come to lay everything at the foot of jesus christ so i can make use of everything to reach out of the gospel to everybody and my present recognition my present recognition my education to this level my intelligence to this level and my talent to this level everything i possess now everything that is in me that is making me the man that i am i lay it at the foot of the lord jesus christ and in the future reserves so all people are serving for the future and they say i need this for my children i need this for so and so i need this for posterity i bring everything together past present and future i lay everything before the lord to use for the lord at this time a person like that will succeed in the gospel a person like that will make profit and make progress in the gospel look at this man it was for the salvation of people that he labored tirelessly he paid the utmost price paul the apostle he paid the utmost price call it suffering call it self-denial call it sacrifice whatever he paid the utmost price not only that this paul the apostle he gave up his greatest pride his greatest pride you know when they were binding him he said are you binding a man that is a roman the other fellow said you're yeah, roman oh yes i was naturally born the other fellow said i bought it to a great price but he gave up all that he gave up everything his greatest pride he sacrificed his highest privileges his highest privileges in the epistles that he wrote he'll say i'm a jew and a pharisee and a son of a pharisee and i profited in the jewish religion more than them all but he said but everything that was gained to me i now count loss for the lord jesus christ he sacrificed his greatest privileges highest privileges he endured the fiercest persecution they persecuted that man like no other man and they stoned him and left him for dead the following day he rose up again and he went into the city preaching the gospel you will not be tired he demonstrated the love tears perseverance perseverance that man just persevered and persevered and persevered it's like he came from another world it's like it's not one of the people over here in his humanity he was but it was the grace of god he said i am what i am by the grace of god that grace of god will multiply in your life he evangelized with the steadiest persistence he evangelized with the steadiest persistence meet him in the acts of the Post, chapter 9 and meet him as you go on from Africa from chapter to chapter he was always moving always on the move you'll be like that you're still young i said you'll be like that the lord will preserve you for this time until this time you'll still be like that these are the greatest years of your life and these are the most important years of your life if this year passes now what are you going to look like in 10 years time if you don't make use of the energy and the strength and the power and the intelligence and the health you have now what are you going to become in 10 years time this is your day and you are going to do something 
this day will not go unrecognized this day will not go without being utilized that paul the apostle evangelized with the steadiest perseverance and with the steadiest persistence he left all he left all for us as the purest pattern of service purest pattern of service he said i am a pattern because of what I've done, other Gentiles can now follow me and they can do what I am doing. A pattern is service. A pattern is sacrifice. A pattern is selflessness. A pattern is steadfastness. Paul the Apostle, he was a pattern. You couldn't look at any area of life and say, okay, he was deficient in this area. He didn't understand this area. He wasn't strong in this other area. A pattern is service. That's left for you. You will serve the Lord. A pattern is sacrifice. It's an example for you. You will sacrifice. A pattern is selflessness. That's a pattern for you. You'll be selfless in Jesus' name. A pattern is steadfastness. You'll be steadfast. You'll not be up and down. Today you are tired. Tomorrow you are strong. And then you are tired again. Then you are up and then you are down. Now you are going to be steady. And now you are going to walk and you are going to do something straightforward in Jesus' name. A pattern in single-mindedness. It was single-minded. This one thing I do, you will do it. I said you will do it. It was a pattern in sanctification. A pattern in holiness. A pattern in spirituality. A pattern in servanthood. A pattern in soul winning. And look at what he said. I'm looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're reading from verse 1. If you are there, we're going to read together. 1, 2, 3, go. Okay, some of you are not there now. If you are there, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I mean, we're reading from verse 1, 1 2, 3, go. You know, a man that was, can you stand in front of your church and say, I want you to, all members of the church, any one of you, you can come to my house, you can come to my place of work, you can go with me, you can stay with me for one whole week, and then after you spend the week from me, with me, then you go and do as I am doing. Look at Paul the Apostle, he told all the people, he said, I have, I have Christ in me, I'm reproducing Christ in my life, and think about any area of life, here is the pattern, here is the model, here is the example, and I can tell you now, be ye followers of me, even as also I am of Christ. It will be so in your life. Yeah. Chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 16, chapter 4, verse 16, it says, Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. I beseech you, be ye followers of me. He, he was so sure I was going to heaven. And he said, if you follow me, if you follow my pattern, you will get there. I pray you will get there. Philippians chapter 3, verse 17. Philippians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 17. He says, brethren, be followers together of me. You know, telling the Corinthians and telling the Philippians here now, be ye followers together of me and mark them which walk as ye have us for an example. Look at chapter 4, verse 9. Chapter 4, verse 9. Those things which ye have seen, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. He said, that's all you need. That's all you need. I never tell you, do as I say, and not do as I do. Everything I expect you to do in the service of God, everything I expect you to do is so winning. Everything I expect you to do is sacrificing everything. I'm doing it also. Just watch my life. It says those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace will be with you. The God of peace will be with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And so you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. You will not fear whatever will happen in your community. The God of... Tell me now. The God of... Shall be with you. 
Look at Romans chapter 16 and verse 20. Romans chapter 16, verse 20. This is the same God here. Romans chapter 16, verse 20. Are you there? Tell me what's going to happen to you. Say that again. Let your, let your spirit soak that in. Victory has come. Authority has come. Dominion has come. You will not fail. You will not fall. Everything that comes against you, the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Keep on moving. Keep on walking. Keep on going here and there. Every way you march, you march on him. On Satan. On evil spirit. On evil power. They'll not be on your head. They'll not be on your tummy. They'll not be in your body. Where will Satan be? Where will your enemies be? Where will, where will those evil spirits be? Stand up and march on them. The God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, you are ready now for service. Tell the Lord, you are ready now for service. Tell the Lord, you are ready now for service. You are going to serve the Lord. You are going to serve the Lord. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly.